In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this tab bar from scratch. Let's get started. So to get started, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I just have a head tag with the link to the font family I'm going to use for the project. And beneath that, I have body tags, which are empty. So to get started, I'm going to go inside of the body tags of the HTML. And first I'm going to create a nav element with a class of nav. And so this will hold the entire tab bar. So within that nav, I'm going to create an unordered list with a class of nav list. And so each element in the navigation will be a list item. So here I'm going to create a list item with a class of nav list item. So we will include several list items and each list item will include an SVG. So beneath this, I'm just going to copy and paste an SVG that I already picked out. So now we can see this icon on the page. Next, I'm just going to add a few more list items to the page. So again, every single list item contains a class of nav list item and inside is the SVG. So now we have four list items on the page. Now, initially, when the user lands on the page, I want one of the elements to be in the active state. So I'm going to add the class of nav list item dash active to the first list item. And that way, when the user initially lands on the page, the first item will be in the active state. So this is actually all of the HTML that we need for the project and everything else will be completed within CSS and within JavaScript. Now I like to add SCSS as a preprocessor here, which allows me to declare color variables and also keep my CSS really organized. So I'm going to use SCSS for this project. And initially I just like to declare some variables. So I'm going to copy and paste some color variables and also a radius and an animation curve. Next, I like to add some basic styling that I add to every project. I just set the box sizing set to border box and a margin and padding set to zero universally. And now with all that basic styling set, I can apply styling to each individual element. So first I'm going to apply styling for the body. And for the body, I'm going to set the background color to a light gray. I'm going to set a margin top and bottom to zero, left and right to two REM. For the content within the body, I'm going to set the display set to flex and I'm going to justify the content and align the items in the center. And I'm also going to set the height to 100% of the viewport height. Next, I'm going to work on the nav. So I'm going to reference the class of nav and I'm going to set the background color to white. I'm going to set a box shadow, zero in the X and Y direction, 10 pixels blur and a five pixel spread of a medium gray. I'm also going to apply a specific border radius to this. I'm going to set the overflow to hidden. I'm going to apply a padding of one REM and I'm going to set the width to 24 REM. Next, I'm going to work on the list. So beneath this, I'm going to write and list to reference the nav list. And for this, I'm going to set the display set to flex with a justified content set to center. And I'm also going to add a gap of one REM. So we can see that this is starting to take shape. So beneath this, I'm going to reference each item in the list. So here I'm going to write and item, and I'm going to set the list style to none, which will remove that bullet point. I'm going to increase the padding to one REM. I want this element to appear interactive. So I'm going to set the cursor to pointer. And I'm also going to set the position of this to relative. And it's because I'm going to use the position absolute later on and I need something for it to hold on to. Next, I'm going to work on the circle highlight that's beneath the SVG element. So there are various ways that you can accomplish this kind of effect, but the way that I'm going to do it is with pseudo elements. So I'm going to add a before pseudo element. So here I'm going to write and before, and for pseudo elements, you always have to include a content tag, even if it's empty. So I'm going to include a content tag of an empty string. I'm going to specify a width and a height, and I'm going to set the background color to a variable that I already declared. For this element, I'm going to set the display of it to block, 
with the border radius set to the radius variable. For this element, I want full control over its placement on the page, so I'm going to set the position of it to absolute with a top and left value of zero, so that will move its position. And then I know I want this element to pop on the page, so I'm going to apply a transition here of the transform property that will take place in 400 milliseconds with a particular animation curve that I already declared as a variable. So with this initial state already defined, I can now set the transform of the scale of it to zero because this is how I want it to look initially. I want it to have a scale of zero, and when the active class is applied to it, I want the scale to go to one. So this is the initial setup for the pseudo element. And beneath that, I'm going to apply styling for the actual SVGs. They're quite large and I wanna reduce the size of it a bit. So beneath this, I'm going to reference the SVG and I'm going to change the fill of it to a different gray color. I'm going to specify the width to two REM and I'm going to set the transition of the fill property to 400 milliseconds with the same animation curve. And that's because I want that fill of it to change in the hover state as well. So now with this updated styling of the SVG, if I go back up to the before pseudo element and I change that scale of it to one, we will see how it looks when that pseudo element is applied to the actual list item. Now we have a problem here because I can see the circle, but it's covering the SVG beneath it. So I know I have to change the Z index. So underneath this, I'm going to set the Z index of the before element to one. And then for the SVG, I'm going to make the Z index higher. So you could make it any value greater than one, but I'm just going to set it to 99. So that way it's definitely on top of that before element. And right now we don't see any change on the page. And that's because I need to change the position property of the SVG in order for that Z index to work. So beneath this, I'm going to set the position of the SVG to relative. So now the SVG is on top of the pseudo element, which is how I want it to look. So beneath this, I'm going to apply the hover effect for the SVG. So underneath this, I'm going to write and hover and apply a style for the SVG. And I'm going to change the fill of it to the primary color. So now when I'm on top of a list item, the SVG changes color. Next, I'm going to start working on the active state. So going back up to the pseudo element, I'm going to again change that transform to a scale of zero because that's how I want it to be initially. So now we don't see the before pseudo element on the page anymore. And beneath this, I'm going to create the active state. So here I'm going to write and dash active. I want to keep the SVG as the primary color. And I also want that before pseudo element to transform to a scale of one. So this means that when the active class is applied to a list item, I want the SVG to have the primary color. And I also want that before pseudo element to have a scale of one, which we can see right here. Great. So the last thing we need to do is actually add some JavaScript. So that way when the user taps on any of these other list items, they will have the active class and the active class will be removed from that first list item. So going inside of my JavaScript first, I'm just going to declare some variables for the elements in the HTML. So I'm going to create a variable called nav and that will reference the nav class. And I'm also going to create a variable for the nav list items. Next, I'm going to add some event listeners to pay attention to when a nav list item is clicked on. And when it is clicked on, I'm going to run a function that will add the active class. So beneath this, I'm going to write nav list item, and I'm going to make it a for each because for each link, I'm going to pay attention to when it is clicked. So for every link, I'm going to add an event listener and I'm going to pay attention to when it is clicked. So here I'm going to write click and the function I'm going to run will be called list active, which will make that particular list item active. So this is basically saying grab all of the list items and then for each one, add an event listener to it and pay attention for a click. And if one is clicked, run the function of list active. Now we have an error and that's because I didn't define this function of list active. So beneath this, I'm going to write function list active. And for this function, I'm going to go through each nav list item 
and I'm going to remove the class of nav list item active because I don't know which one was previously active before I tapped on the next one. So I'm just going to remove the class of nav list item active to all of the elements and then add it back to the one that was actually tapped on. So here I'm going to write nav list item and I'm going to add another for each. And for each one, I'm going to remove the class of nav list item active. So here I'm going to write link dot class list dot remove. And I'm going to remove that class. And then for the one that I actually tapped on, I'm going to write this dot class list dot add and then add that active class. So now I'm expecting that when I tap on another list item, it will get the active class. So I tap and now this one has the active class and this one does not. And if I tap another one, now this one has the active class. So there you go. That's how I created this tab bar from scratch. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.